Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. There's the good doggy. That's my boy. I've got something for you. I got them from Uncle Peshek. Just don't go poking them where you shouldn't. Uh, they're lockpicks. They're not really intended for poking in your own locks. True, but at least don't get caught. And if you do, you didn't get them from me. Hey, lad! Don't you want a little Wouldn't you like to take a stroll somewhere? Morning? I'd love to. Listen, Teresa. There's something I ought to tell you. What is it? What's troubling you? I'm not quite sure how to tell you, so I'll just spit it out. Sir Radzig Kobola is... my father. <laughs> and King Wenceslas is my cousin. You really had me going. No, I'm serious. What? But... Henry... how on earth could... I know. It was a shock for me, too. It turns out Sir Radzig and my mother had some... Romance. Of course, he couldn't marry a commoner. And your father? I mean, the blacksmith. God, that sounds so odd. I mean, Martin. He knew Sir Radzik from way back. Martin... Pa married her before I was born. To protect her reputation. And raise me as his own. And Sir Radzik allowed it? Sure. Actually, I get a feeling the whole thing was agreed between them. So Radzig was glad she wasn't left alone with a child. My God, Henry. That's just... And what will that mean for you? Hmm. I honestly don't know. <laughs> you don't know? Well, it all depends on Sir Radzig, doesn't it? As his illegitimate son, I don't have any rights as such. But it's not like I've suddenly become a noble like Capon. And even though Sir Radzig has publicly acknowledged me... Well, sort of. It hasn't really changed anything. And if Sir Radzig decided to make a real noble of you, would you want that? I wouldn't. And it's never going to happen anyway. Why not? A bastard remains a bastard. Even if Sir Radzig never had another heir, all his property would go to the king by rights. You might be right, but can't you imagine it? Would you... Would you still care for me, a common mill maid, if you were a nobleman? Of course. I'll always be fond of you. Nothing will change that. I'll remember that. I hope you won't regret those words. No fear of that. Time passes so quickly with you, Henry. Come and see me again sometime. Don't you feel hot under all that iron? Have you got a moment? I'd like to ask a few questions about scallops. I don't remember much. A all right. What do you want to know? How did you get me away from scallops? It wasn't easy. So Robard and his men helped load you on a wagon and we harnessed an old nag the bandits had left behind. The soldiers escorted us all the way here. God bless them. What about the bandits? So Robard and his men routed them. They killed the few, but the giant who attacked you fled and Zibishek with him. It won't be safe in Scalitz for a while yet. Why would Zibishek do that? I never thought much of him, but banditry? 
He was always a nasty piece of work. Doesn't surprise me he joined them. If you knew what he did to me. Tell me. When those... Cumans, they call them. When the Cumans came, Zabishek pushed me out in front of them and fled. He sacrificed me to save his own hide. That bastard. Why would Zbyshek do that? I never thought much of him, but banditry. He was always a nasty piece of work. Doesn't surprise me he joined them. If you knew what he did to me. Tell me. When those... Cumans, they call them. When the Cumans came, Zbyshek pushed me out in front of them and fled. He sacrificed me to save his own hide. That bastard. Where's the sword I had? You had a sword? It's gone now. Those scum took everything, including your horse. I don't give a damn about the horse. I stole it anyway. But my father forged that sword for Sir Radzik. I promised father I'd take it to him. I have to get it back. Well, you can't. Just be thankful you're still alive. What happened to the other survivors from Scalitz? They sought refuge in Ratei. And some of the Ratei folk are none too happy about it. And Matthew, Fritz and Matthias? Johanka? Did they make it? They're alive. I heard Matthias is at the stud farm in Merhoyed. Johanka is in Sasau, and Fritz and Matthew, well, you know them. They're up to no good somewhere. The only trouble they'll be in is of their own making. What about Sir Radzig? Sir Hanush, he's the Lord of Ratay. He gave his lower castle to Sir Radzig, a place called Perkstein. Sir Hanush lives at the upper castle. The Scarlet's folk have made camp in front of it. How did you get away from those Cumans? You're wrong. If it hadn't been for you... When they came to the mill, they slaughtered everyone. And kept me for last. After you distracted them... I fled to the mines to find my brother, but he... My brother was dead, but I owe my life and more to you. And I owe mine to you. The scales are balanced. How did you get away from those Cumans? You're wrong. If it hadn't been for you... When they came to the mill, they slaughtered everyone. And kept me for last. After you distracted them... I fled to the mines to find my brother, but he... My brother was dead, but I owe my life and more to you. And I owe mine to you. The scales are balanced. I won't trouble you anymore. Let's leave it be. I'd like to know... So, how do you like it in Ratai? It's a big town with good strong walls, so I suppose we're safe here. And they took us in in our hour of need, but for how much longer? They'll grow tired of us soon enough. What do you think of the Lord here, Sir Hanush? He comes from the glorious line of the Lords of Lyper. Folks say he's a bit hot-headed, but he took us in, so he must be a good Christian. Who's this Sir Hans Capon? He's actually the real Lord of Ratay, and Sir Hanush is only his guardian, because Sir Hans is underage and his father is dead. Folks say he's a spoilt young pup with an eye for the lasses. How are the Scalitz folk getting on? They're alive, that's the main thing. They have shelter, but they're just scraping by. Ratay's citizens aren't happy the town is full of beggars who don't look like leaving any time soon. Do you know anything about those human rapists? About, you know? They came to Hungary from God knows where, and now they... Well, folk tell awful stories about them. I hope I never see them again. That's all. What actually happened to you in Scalix? I mean, during the attack and... Well, you know... That's a long story. Not a very cheerful one. 
Are you sure you want to hear it now? I do. All right, then. It was a day like any other. Another ordinary day in my ordinary life. I awoke at first light, before the others. I like those kind of mornings best. When the first rays of sunshine quickly drive away the nighttime cold. Hello, you. Come here. And the breeze carries the scent of dew-covered grass and the bloom of spring. I wanted to get my chores done before the rest of the household was up. And this morning seemed made for that very purpose. Right, better get to work. I have to feed the hens, weed the garden, feed Tinker. Better get it all done before Papa is up. I must bring Tinka a piece of meat. That'll be a nice treat. No, I should finish my chores and not wake anyone. Here, chicky, chicky, chicky. Here, here you are, girls. Fill your beaks. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. That should do it. The garden is looking how it should again. You're like a lost soul. A razor? What do you need, Papa? Go up and see the blacksmith. He made some nails for me. Here's some coin. All right. Anything else while I'm at it? No, unless you want to stop off at the market and buy some supplies. And before you go, wake Samuel. 
The boy's still lying in bed and won't stir. He ought to follow your example and Stebor's. You two don't have to be pushed to work. Well, at least he's still better than that good-for-nothing's Bishek. The lazy wretch. A helper like that isn't worth a damn. If it weren't for his father, God rest his soul, I'd have thrown him out on his ear long ago. Aye, he's an idler, that one. And he'd hardly give you the time of day, never mind a kind word. God will reward him in kind one day, mark my words. You could tell him to get his ass to work, too. Right. Go for nails, send Samuel and Zabishek to work. If it's at all possible. Aye, just so. Oh, and Teresa, once you've done all your chores for the day, I have a little surprise for you. A surprise, Pa? Don't you want to tell me about it now? Curiosity killed the cat. What kind of surprise would it be if I told you, girl? Oh, all right. Sammy, get up. It's broad daylight, and the birds are singing. Yeah, yeah, I'm up, I'm up. Have a bite to eat before going to the mine. All right, Ma. You don't have to treat me like a child. Looks like it'll be nice today, eh? Hmm. I could go to the pond fishing. But you have to go to work. I know. But maybe I can slip off after lunch. There'll be no slipping off. You know very well Nemoy has been complaining about you. What, about dropping that pail on Tonda's head? It was an accident. Not the first accident you've had, though, was it? Well, there you go, then. If I leave early, nothing will happen to anyone. And you can cook the fish for lunch tomorrow. You silly sod. All you ever do at the pond is lie around. The only thing you'll catch is more trouble from the mine master when he finds out. Well, if you're not a child, you can sort it out yourself with Nemoy. Don't I always? Pa says you're idle, and if you carry on like that, he'll throw you out. Ah! Why would he do that? Then he'd be left only with Stibor, and Stibor is not going to break his back working either. Listen, Zabishek. Pa's not happy with you, and if he says you're idling, you'd better make a bit of effort. I'm only telling you for your own good. You wouldn't want to lose your job now, would you? You lot are always going on about work as if it was a blessing from heaven. All right, all right. I'll get to work. Anything for a bit of peace. That's more like it. You'll see it doesn't hurt.
sign of the blacksmith. Where can he be? God be with you. What can I do for you? Father sent me to pick up nails, but there's no one at the fort. Aye, uh, sorry, lass. Martin had to go to the castle to talk to Sir Radzig. He's to forge a sword for his lordship. Oh, I see. And has he made the nails for Pa? I'm afraid he hasn't had time on account of that sword. But if you'll come tomorrow, he'll surely have them for you. I'll remind him this evening. All right, I'll stop by tomorrow. Do that, dear. Oh, and by the way, the girls were looking for you. Which girls? Bianca and Johanka. You should stop by and see them before you go home. You girls must be plotting something. What was it about? They didn't say, but it seemed important, which probably means boys, I suppose, hey? Don't talk to me about boys, good wife. I've three fellas at home, and that's Bishek at the mill. You get more use and less braying out of a donkey. <laughs> You're very sensible for your age, lass. But I'm sure you'll change your mind when your pa finds a good husband for you. I'd like to know where. Thanks for letting me know. I'll stop by tomorrow for those nails, then. Not at all. Oh, and another thing, Teresa. Have you seen Henry around anywhere? If he helped his father out more at the forge, there'd be no shortage of nails. I haven't seen him at all. No doubt he's at that sword play with that so-called combat master again. If he could wield a hammer half as good as a wooden sword, there'd be no shortage of nails. Good day, Teresa. God be with you. Do you need anything? What's new in the village, Yarmila? Did you happen to meet that scholar who's been wandering around here since yesterday? He told me a wonderful story from olden times when Princess Libusa ruled. You've heard about Libusa, haven't you? Um, no. I don't know her. Who was she? Really? I thought everyone knew that story. She was a princess of bygone days who married a plowman, and he later became king. But she was a seer, too, and she had all sorts of visions. And she founded Prague. That's interesting. What did the scholar tell you about her? About the Maiden's War. Would you like to hear it? Maiden's War? That sounds like a good story. Tell me about it. Girls were different back then. In pagan times, they could live... How did he put it? Free of the yoke of marriage. They bore arms like men and waged war. And they chose their own leader. And they even dressed like men. Can you believe it? What happened to them? He said they were so bold that they even built their own fortress where no man was allowed. They really did that themselves? Oh, I. And when the menfolk found out, they were envious. They came together in great numbers and built their own fortress in sight of the Maiden's One. What? Men and women lived separately in their own castles? They did, and they waged war on each other. The men were braver, but the women often outsmarted them. Naturally. How did it end up? In the end, 
They agreed on a truce. To celebrate peace, they feasted for three days, and each man took away one bride. Oh. I was expecting it to end... differently. I'd be happier too if the women won and could grab any husband they wanted. <laughs> A pretty picture indeed. Thanks for the story, it was quite inspiring. I must be going. Our fortress is still ruled by men, and they haven't learned to clean up after themselves. I wouldn't say that. You want to stick your head out the door now? Good day. It's always been like that, though. Anyway, if it does snow, I'll just drag the sledge out of the barn. You're just mocking me now. I wouldn't dream of it. Well, joke all you like, but I heard it snowed in Sternberg only a week ago. Nonsense. Who told you such a thing? It's true, I swear. The wife's brother goes that way with eggs and milk. He says there was nothing down below the castle. But up top, the snow was ankle deep. God be with you. Do you need anything? Any news, Maruna? Well, there's a peculiar fellow standing by the potters on the outskirts, selling strange trinkets, relics and the like, and he's got a peculiar talk to go with it. Peculiar in what way? Well... I went to see what he was selling and greeted him politely, and he started on about how I'm a pretty girl and what have you. What's so strange about that? Fellas are always talking to girls that way if they don't wear a wife's scarf. Ah, but that's not all. He started on about how we're different from one another, men and women like, and in a vulgar way too. So, what did he say was the difference between men and women? He said, a woman's body is the opposite of a man's. That they've got their, you know, outside, and ours is inside. And that it's because men have more heat inside their bodies, and that pushes their things out. But we're colder, and so we've got it inside. Do you think it's true, what he says? It sounds like a lot of nonsense to me. Maybe he was just trying to seduce you. Oh, with talk like that? Well, you know what asses men can be. <laughs> then he's an even bigger madman than I took him for. I'd rather not say anything on the subject. Take care of yourself, Maruna. Here's your change. I'm always glad to serve you. It up nicely, hasn't it? How are you? How are things with you, Pickman? Pickman? I thought only the fellows at the mine called me that. Oh, sorry. Samuel sometimes mentions you, and I suppose I got used to it. Does it bother you? Ah, what's the difference? I'll never shake it anyway. Pickman the idiot who chopped off two of his toes with a pick. That's awful. People are always getting hurt in the mines. How did it happen, exactly? Just not paying attention, I suppose. We were digging a tunnel and I simply hit my foot with a pickaxe. It went through my boot like a hot knife through butter. That must have hurt awfully. It hurt like hell. And now I have to stuff the tip of my boot with straw or I can't walk straight. I'd better be going. There's lots of work to be done. Be careful now, all right? Yeah, yeah. What will it be today? Thanks. Do drop by again. Greetings.
How may I be of service? I need a few things. That's everything. Here you are. Hmm. What was it I needed? God bless. What can I help you with? What do you need? There'll be quite a lot. Here you are. Thanks for everything. God be with you. What news, neighbour? Have you heard that King Wenceslas's half-brother Sigismund and his foreign soldiers sacked Kuttenberg? I expect he wanted to loot his brother's silver to pay for his campaign against his allies. That horde of Tartars and mercenaries he has doesn't come cheap. I heard something about it. Were many people killed? No. Those cowardly burghers surrendered to Sigismund without a fight and begged him for their lives on their knees in the mud. Why would King Sigismund turn against his own brother like that? He wants to depose him, that's why. He and those foreign lords of his think Wenceslas isn't paying enough attention to the problems of the Empire. Well, that's easy to say, but if you ask me, the whole world is going to hell. Not even the church is able to stick together, and now we have two popes? How is a person supposed to know what to believe in anymore? What do you think will happen? It's starting to stink like a few years ago. You were still a little girl then, so you wouldn't know, but Wenceslas had to yield to his own lords. Jobs of Moravia and his League of Lords even abducted Wenceslas and locked him up in Austria. Wenceslas's younger brother John and his cousin, Prokop of Moravia, got him released in the end. Well, at least some of his family remained loyal to him. Well, yes. Only John and Prokop had to make some concessions to the lords in Prague that the king didn't agree with, so they fell out with him in the end anyway. I don't reckon they'll be willing to come to his aid again. The more I hear about politics, the less sense it makes. I must get back to work. Good day. What news, neighbor? News? Have you not heard, girl? The empire is falling asunder under the hands of the king. How do you mean? King Sigismund of Hungary besieged Kuttenberg, and quite rightly too, in my opinion, because King Wenceslas rule is no rule at all. I am not the only one who would rather see his brother Sigismund on the throne. But Wenceslas is still our rightful king. We can't just change our loyalty to someone else. But who is to bring order if the king cannot do it? Good man, Deutsch. You ought to watch what you say. Sir Radzig is the king's hetman, and he could take you to task for such seditious talk. Good day to you. Bianca, how come you're up so bright and early? Papa has me running around from dawn till dusk. You know how it is. Indeed I do. I'm glad you're here, Tess. You've got to help me with something. But first, can you go and see Henry for me? He's at the sheepfold by the stockade, as usual. Oh, playing around with wooden swords again? Aye, he's getting ready for the life of a mighty warrior. Well, at least we know he'll be able to protect you from outlaws with wooden swords. <laughs> oh well, boys and their games. Listen, would you bring him a beer from me? But why don't you bring it yourself? If Pa saw me running after Henry, he'd tend my hide. But I can't leave him dry in this heat. All right, I'll bring the beer to him. Thanks. And don't forget to tell him it's from me. Everyone knows all the beer in Scalettes is from you and your pa. <laughs> you know what I mean. And listen, Tess, 
once you've given him the beer, come back to me again. Meanwhile, I'll make an excuse to Pa. I need you to go somewhere with me, but I'll tell you all about it after. Run along before the beer gets warm. God be with you, Henry. Mind you don't get hurt. Good day, Teresa. I brought you a beer. I'd say you'd need it after a hard battle. Ah, great. It's as hot as Pa's forge out here today. That's very sweet of you to get me a beer. Actually, Bianca sent it. Her Pa doesn't want her to come here. Ah, I see. I'll make it up to her this evening. I don't want to know how. How come you're training on your own today? You're usually here with that vagabond. What's his name? Vanyek. And he's not a vagabond. He's a wayfaring combat master. Well, it looks like he's off wayfaring somewhere else today. Yeah, <laughs> more likely sleeping off last night's boozing. Actually, since I've no opponent today, wouldn't you like to have a go? I mean, a bit of swordplay. I could teach you. Me? Swordplay? Sure. Why not? All right, then. I accept your challenge, young sir. But I must warn you, I can swat a mouse with a broom with my eyes closed. Yeah, I knew you had the heart of a warrior. Let's go, then. Come on, then. Show me what you're made of. Whoever is the first to hit the other ten times is the victor. What if I hurt you, though? Ah, don't worry. I can handle it. Don't go easy on me, Hal. Ah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, really? Now that is hardly chivalrous behavior. Now, I shall have to fight for my honor. Take that, you scoundrel! Oh. Are you all right? It's nothing. I'm fine. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Are you mad at me? No, of course not. It's my own stupid fault. Well, that'll teach you to go around slapping decent, God-fearing girls on the backside. <laughs> Let me have a look at it. No, no, it's only a scratch and a couple of splinters. And I didn't mean to, you know. Show me that. No, really, it's nothing.
You know how it is, Hal. He who lives by the sword. Dies by the splinter, eh? <laughs> <laughs> There now. By the way, you owe Bianca for that beer. Good health to you, Teresa. God's blessings. What else was it you wanted from me? You brought that beer to Henry, then? I did. Uh-huh. And what did he say? He said thanks. That's about it. Huh. That's just like him. All right. But now I can tell you what I wanted. Fancy a walk in the woods? Right now? You want to court me in the shade of the pines? <laughs> no. I need to pick herbs for distilling schnapps. Henry's favorite. What herbs do you need? I've got almost everything, except belladonna. I know a clearing where the best plants grow. Belladonna? But that's deadly poison. It is, if you don't know what you're doing. But don't worry, I haven't poisoned anyone yet. Why don't you go and pick it yourself? Pa won't let me go on my own. They say a wolf was seen in the woods recently. A wolf? Hereabouts? So they say. But it was old Blaha who claimed to see it, and he's never sober. Still, I wouldn't want to go there alone. Couldn't your brother go with you? Adam? He'd shit himself if he saw a wolf. And besides, someone has to take care of the tavern. But he could lend us his bow. Good thinking, Tess. Uh, thanks? So, you're going to borrow a bow from Adam, and then you want me to go with you to pick Belladonna in the woods? Actually, it's not entirely that simple. Adam won't lend me his bow. The last time he did, I broke the string. You'll have to get it from him. Anyway, I don't know how to shoot. But Stibor taught you, didn't he? Yeah, but that was a long time ago. It doesn't matter. If the wolf sees a bow, he won't come near us. So will you go and ask Adam? You know he's always liked you. Just give him a wink and the bow is yours. You might be able to do that with Henry, but me, well, come now. You're as pretty as any lass in the province. And once you've got the bow, meet me on the bridge by the lake, all right? All right, I'll help you. But next time I want something from you, I don't want to hear any excuses about how you have to see Henry. Deal. You're an angel, Tess. Good day. I heard you're a really good archer. And that you've even got your own bow. Uh, yeah. I've got a bow. I made it myself. And I can hit the tree behind the tavern at 20 paces. Good heavens, that's amazing. Um, would you lend me your bow for a while? Lend my bow? To a girl? Well... I don't know, Teresa. Hey, Adam. 
If you lend me a bow, I'll dance with you at the next celebration. Oh? You would? Really? All right. Here's the bow, then. And some arrows. Take it all. Thank you so much, Adam. Teresa are going to pick herbs. Adam, keep an eye on things here while I'm gone. Yeah, sure. Just be back before the place fills up in the evening. Groschen or two? I'll give you something. Wait. A few groschen will do. Here you are. At least you can get yourself a bite to eat. Oh, thanks a thousandfold. God sees your good deed and will watch over you. I've seen you in Scarlet's, but I've never spoken to you before. No. Not many people talk to me. Why is that? Why? Because I'm a stranger here. And people would rather look after their own than strangers. Why are you begging? I lost everything. I had a wife, a home, children. I had cattle and sheep. Then foreign soldiers came and took it all from me. They killed and burned. Only I survived. What soldiers do you mean? I don't know. One soldier's the same as the next. I fled far away to this peaceful land, as far as I could from the scene of my suffering. I've got the bow. We can get going. Great. Come with me. God save Teresa. Huh. Hey, Teresa, wait. There's a magpie's nest somewhere on that tree. Last time I was passing here, I saw that bird carrying something shiny to its nest. Listen, since you've got a bow, why not try and shoot the nest down? Adam does it all the time, so I'm sure there's nothing to it. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this.
I had a look in the nest. Yeah? And what did you find there? There was a ring in it. Looks like silver. Really? Holy Mother of God! I always wanted a silver ring. But you're the one who shot it down. You can have it. You're giving it to me? Tess, you're the best friend ever. Thank you. I'll wear it to the dance this evening. Come on. Let's go and pick those herbs before it gets too late. I wonder what happened here. I saw it the last time. But no one reported anything in Scarlet's. Do you think they scooted off the road and something devoured them? Maybe... Maybe a wolf? I thought you didn't believe in the wolf. I don't. I, I didn't. Better keep going. Come on. Hmm. May the Lord watch over you, Tess. We'll turn into the woods here and go uphill a bit. Follow me. It's a sweet little garden, isn't it? I never met anyone here, but it's always well kept. Probably some witch. Who else would keep a garden in the woods? It's a shame that witch doesn't grow belladonna too. Did... Did you hear that? We'd better keep going, alright? Teresa, come back! Good boy. That's my boy. Teresa, where are you off to? Tess, where are you going? We're nearly there. We'll go along the road here, and then back into the woods. This is the place. I'll start picking, and you keep a lookout. Shouldn't I help you pick herbs too? No, I'll manage fine on my own. I'd rather you kept your eyes peeled for that wolf. What should I do if the wolf turns up, though? You've got a bow, right? Don't think about it. Just shoot him. Besides, you've got Tinker. Although, I'm not sure he's any match for a wolf. How long will it take you? Just a short while. Don't worry. But while I'm at it, I'd like to pick enough to keep me going for a while. Just keep watch, and I'll tell you when I'm done. All right, I'll keep watch. Just make it quick.
I'm glad I remembered this place. It seems no one else knows about it. Teresa, I'm glad to see you. I thought those rumors about a wolf were just idle talk. Idle talk, indeed. If I'd been alone, that beast would surely have devoured me. Did anything happen to you? <sighs> no, I'm fine. Thank God. It's a good thing you came along. Did you manage to pick enough herbs? Yeah, I did. Fortunately. I'll brew plenty of that liquor. Enough for you, too. As a reward. All right. Thanks. That was a funny-looking wolf, don't you think? I reckon it was actually a wild dog. Wolf or dog? It was a monstrous beast. Henry will never believe this. What will you do now? I'll go back to work at the tavern. There's been quite enough excitement for one day. Thanks for coming with me, Tess. And don't forget to come and see me tomorrow. All right. right there on the ground. No. Was there much in it? Half a dozen groschen and change. Boy, Christ. That was worth bending down for, eh? Indeed. Good day, Teresa. I couldn't believe it.
then good luck with that. Because in case you haven't noticed, everyone around here lives near the mines. Aye, but some live closer than others. And then there's also the fact that... How to put it? We're asking you because... Well, you're a miller, right? Oh, I see. Since I'm a miller, I must be a crook. Is that it? No, but you know what they say. Aye, they say you lot can hardly find your own asses. Never mind a thief. You're keeping me from my work, young fellas. So if we're done here, farewell and good luck. All right, Miller. If you should happen to hear anything, let us know. God save you, Tess! I went for those nails, but the blacksmith is with Sir Radzik today. All right, leave it till tomorrow then. No hurry. Right now, I need something else. Quick. What's up? The guards were here asking around. They said someone's been stealing silver from the mines. Can you go and tell Stebor? He went to check the fish trap below the bridge. Why? What has Stebor got to do with stolen silver? Uh, uh, look, just talk to him about it, all right? But I'm asking you, Father. Don't tell me you don't trust your own daughter. For heaven's sake, Teresa. I said talk to Stebor about it, so talk to Stebor. And hurry! Pa sent me. The guards were here, asking about Silver going missing from the mines. Oh shit. Oh shit. All right. All right. Listen, Tess. I need your help. Just say the word. What do you need? We need to pick up a sack from one of the mine shafts. I don't suppose it's a sack of flour you're talking about? It's... it's Silver Ore. Sweet Jesus. You fellows haven't the sense you were born with. But family is family. Thanks, Tess. I'm sorry to drag you into it, but I can't manage it on my own. Where did you hide it? That's the thing. It's at the bottom of a flooded shaft. Samuel was working there before. You dragged Samuel into it too? No, no. Samuel knows nothing about it. So why don't you just go and get it? I don't know how to get to it. For heaven's sake, Stebor! Do you know where it is or not? Yes, but, you see, when I was carrying it out, they stopped me. I was standing on this wooden walkway and I dropped it over the edge so they wouldn't catch me with it. And now I don't know how to get to it. All I know is it made a splash when it fell. And how are we supposed to find it? Go crawling through the whole mine? No, I've got an idea. Samuel knows that area. He he'll know how to get to the shaft. Oh no, Stebor, forget it. You're not going to drag Samuel into your dangerous games. Christ, no. What do you take me for? All he has to do is draw a map, and we'll do the rest. Are you sure it's the same shaft where Samuel was working? Definitely. There's no other flooded shaft in the mine. Remember when everyone was talking about how they hit a spring and had to abandon it? All right, Stebor. I'll go to Samuel and get the map from him. Have you got something I can give him to draw it with? Here. Give him this. And try to get it from him without giving the game away. Otherwise, Pa will have a fit if he finds out. I'll do what I can. Where is Sammy now? And where do you think? I saw him heading for the fish pond, as usual, to avoid work. Once you have it, come and meet me at Wenceslas Corridor on the hill. I'll be waiting there.
God grant you health. How may I help you? Sammy, I need something from you. Oh, Tess, I just got ready for fishing. Don't worry. You don't have to go anywhere. Remember that mine shaft where you used to work before it got flooded? Yeah, it was a deep one. We went down that morning, and we were up to our knees in water. Master Faithfar said that always happens when you dig deeper than the drainage at it. We dug a well to slow it down, but even that wasn't enough. Do you think you could draw me a map of the way there? Why? What on earth would you want that for? Stebor dropped something there. Dropped something? What? Never mind. You really don't want to know. For Christ's sake, what the hell are you mixed up in now? Oh, well, whatever. Show me that, I'll draw you a map. Thanks. I'll run to him with it right away. Well, have you got it? I got that map from Samuel. What now? Great! Well, first, we've got to get into the mine. That fool Nimoy is keeping watch. It'd be best if we split up. I'll get rid of him, and you can sneak in. I want to ask you something. Why do I have to go inside? Why don't you do it? Well, remember when we used to play hide-and-seek? Yeah. You could never find me. And you always found me immediately, because I was useless at hiding. Yeah. You always had something sticking out. Exactly. You're right. Best if I do it. For sure. There won't be many people inside now. Most of the lads will be outside eating. But even so, watch out. Tell me again where I can find that sack. It's somewhere in that flooded shaft. It's a good thing I was on that walkway when they stopped me, otherwise I'd have had nowhere to drop it. Only now, you have to get down there. Who caught you? And how did you get out of it? The miners, of course. I told them I was looking for Samuel, but I still got a hard time from the guards for being there at all. That's all. All right. Let's get it over with, then. Once I get rid of him, you sneak inside past the bushes. And take a torch with you. It's as black as pitch in there. Just make sure no one sees you, though. Good luck, Tess. Hey, Nimoy, you rogue! Come here a minute. Got belly ache, have you? What do you want, Miller's boy? Looking for that cross runner. Some fella might feel your teeth with his knuckles, you goat. Remember the blacksmith's son, Henry? That time when the butcher took his Bianca for a whirl? Ah, dance ain't a proper dance if there ain't a brawl or two. And if you're afraid, just stick to the lasso that ain't spoken for. Oh, yeah. And who's left? That wallflower, Johanka? Sourface, Maruna? Or Teresa, the miller's daughter? Well, a Teresa's a fine wench, and no mistake. But her old man would dunk you in the mill race if you as much as looked sideways at her. Aye, the coin-grabbing bastard thinks he'll marry her off to some lord. Ha-ha, <laughs> you're right there, like a rich man would marry a mill witch. Ha-ha, <laughs> I wouldn't say no, though. Huh, you wouldn't say no to anything in a skirt. Neither would you, but at least I'm not ashamed to admit it.
My, that's a hell of a drop. Better be careful. the place Stebor was talking about. I wouldn't want to get lost in here. The walkway. The sack must be here somewhere.
Hey, you. What are you doing? Fuck off before I lose my temper. I've got the silver. What now? Thank heavens. You've no idea what a relief that is. I knew you could do it. Take it to Pa for me, please. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. found the silver in the mine. Not so loud. Oh, good work, lass. Leave it here, and I'll take care of everything. Thanks. I'd like to say I'm glad to be of help, but I'm not, Pa. It could have ended badly for everyone. Very, very badly. Tis. You know I only want the best for all of you, don't you? I do, Pa. I know you mean well. Just... Please, be careful, all right? You and Stebor. Don't worry, lass. We will. Thanks. What about that surprise you promised me this morning? Don't worry, lass. I haven't forgotten. But it's still early. I don't have time now. Besides, don't you have something to do too? Your friends were here asking after you while you were gone. Come to me when you've done everything. Now's not a good time. 